Australia recently unveiled its national electric vehicle strategy. It's aimed at increasing the uptake of EVs across the nation. Bloomberg NEF data showing that EVs represented just 3.6% of all Australian passenger vehicle sales in 2022. With us is BNEF Head of Australian Research, Lenny Kwong, who joins us in Sydney. So what's really the root cause of Australia to, to, to have this lag in the uptake of EVs? And, you know, you see so much more of a preference for, for gas guzzling cars in this nation. Good morning, Heidi. Always a pleasure to be here with you. And you're absolutely right. Look, Australia is a laggard when it comes to the uptake of electric vehicles. To give you some context to that 3.6% figure you just mentioned, by our calculations globally, electric vehicles represented about 15% of all passenger vehicles sold around the world last year. And in some markets like Europe and in China, EVs represented more than one in four car sales. Now, the reason that Australia is lagging behind is multifaceted, but ultimately and primarily, it's a question and an issue of policy and a lack of it. In particular, Australia right now at least lacks any form of fuel efficiency standard or any policy that would control the carbon intensity of cars sold into this country. And while globally the supply of electric vehicles is limited, automotive manufacturers are simply prioritising other markets where these types of policies do exist and deprioritising the Australian market. And as a consequence, if this continues, Australian demand for EVs will continue to grossly outplace the supply into the country and Australia is likely to remain a laggard. So does the national strategy then include some of those policies that are needed? So the release, recently released National Electric Vehicle for a Strategy for Australia was unfortunately a bit of a nothing burger. It was a plan to have a plan. While it did have many pillars supporting the uptake of electric vehicles over time, the fuel efficiency standard component was incredibly light on details. The government has only recently entered consultation on the fuel efficiency standard, but it has stated that it does intend to release it later on this year. Now, this is the component of the policy to watch to understand the uptake of electric vehicles across the country in the years ahead. The stringency of the efficiency standard, as well as any penalties that are in place for non-compliance on the part of automakers, will ultimately dictate what the uptake of EVs will look like in this decade and beyond. Well, Annie, Australia set itself broader ambitious decarbonisation targets by 2030. And in fact, several states are even targeting 100% EV sales by 2035. I suppose my question is, you know, better late than never or a little bit too, too little too late? Um, it's a bit of both, depending on how you look at it. So right now, the transport sector is the second largest source of carbon emissions across Australia, the electricity sector being number one. But because Australia has left driving electric vehicles so late into the game and internal combustion engines, the carbon intensive gas guzzling cars can remain on roads for 10, 15 or even more years, electric vehicle uptake later on this decade is unlikely to have a significant impact in assisting Australia in reaching its 43% emissions reductions targets on 2005 levels by the year 2030. But as you highlighted, it's not the only target that exists across the country right now. The federal government has stated it would like to see electric vehicles representing about 89% of all passenger vehicles sales by the year 2030. And several states have set more ambitious targets, targeting 100% by the year 2035. But of course, these targets are quite ambitious compared to where the country is right now. There's a lot to do and really not much time. But to get there, it draws into question other supportive policies for the uptake of electric vehicles. In particular, the rapid deployment of infrastructure to assist in the charging of vehicles to make sure that that physical ability to charge cars on the part of Australians doesn't bottleneck its decarbonisation efforts in its transport sector.